And when the Affordable Care Act passed, a key part of it was having states expand Medicaid, which is the insurance program the federal government pays for that covers the poorest of Americans. North Carolina, it's one of the only 12 states left that is yet to expand Medicaid. Yeah, the state Senate recently voted overwhelmingly to finally do just that. And even with Senate leader Phil Berger and Governor Roy Cooper firmly behind this idea, in tonight's Buckley Report, Bob explains what stands in the way. Roy Cooper! About the moment he took office in 2016, Governor Roy Cooper started a new campaign to get the state to expand Medicaid. And when we had this opportunity as a state to expand that access to health care, we need to take it. Republicans in the General Assembly had been resisting the idea since President Obama first signed the Affordable Care Act into law in 2010. But now, Republican State Senator Joyce Kravick of Forsyth County is writing the legislation for North Carolina to finally open Medicaid to hundreds of thousands of new patients because, she says, the time is finally right. When I first got to the Senate, we were filling $2 billion holes and uh, because it was, it was broken and it was overspent every year. We've taken care of all that. The federal government keeps adding sweeteners and... Um, Originally, when we were talking about it, it was going to cost us about three billion dollars a year. So that was a real concern for me, as a you know, as a budget maker, and um, that's not the case anymore. Now it will be a revenue enhancer for North Carolina, and I think it's a lifeline for our rural hospitals. From day one, we have supported expansion. Cody Hand is a spokesperson for the State Healthcare Association and says this will reduce costs for everyone. Medicaid expansion would help those. 10 to 20 percent of our patients who come to our emergency departments who don't have access to health insurance. And because they don't have access to health insurance, they can't get the care they need to maintain a healthy life. Are you surprised the state senate is resigned to this? I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit surprised. Jordan Roberts is a health care analyst for the John Locke Foundation who says in the end, the deal was too good to pass up. From a state fiscal policy, and uh, Senate Leader Phil Berger said this on the floor when they were voting on the bill, uh, you know, it's bad federal policy because this is all deficit spending, but it's good state policy because the state does get a huge influx of money. But there is still one big hurdle. Once we get this, what's in it, right? So what, you know, if, we, if we buy this thing, what do we own? Speaker of the House Tim Moore hasn't signed off on the idea yet and is particularly concerned about the estimates that say expanding Medicaid will add another 600,000 people to the health care rolls in the state. You're talking roughly one third, one out of every three folks in this state would be covered by Medicaid. If you would add in Medicare, if you add in VA, all of a sudden you're talking oh, well over half of the population. And so you have to wonder what kind of pressure does that put on, on the private side of things. And sure, the federal government says they'll pay for it all right now, but the country is more than $30 trillion in debt. At the debt level this nation is at, are you confident the federal government can continue this? At the federal level, nothing has ever been given that has not been, that has ever been taken away. So I feel pretty confident that it won't be taken away, but the debt is a huge concern, no question about it. Bob Buckley, Fox 8 News. There are a couple of other major health care reforms tied to Medicaid expansion that are part of the problem. Senator Krawczyk says that expansion would help businesses that are too small to provide insurance to workers by doing it for them. The